Understanding Geographic Isolation Isolation amplifies. It amplifies everything. All schools are impacted by and respond to disadvantage in their communities. In many cases, it is multiple forms of intersecting disadvantage. What is different in rural and remote communities is how geographic isolation amplifies the impact of intersecting disadvantage. The Accessibility Remoteness Index of Australia, or ARIA for short, is a classification developed by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, which is now widely accepted as the standard measure of remoteness for Australia. This map shows the remoteness access, or RA, classifications. Major cities are identified in red, inner regional areas in yellow, outer regional areas in lime green, remote areas in sky blue, and very remote areas in royal blue. An analysis of the ARIA data shows that 53% the total number of Department of Education and Community Schools are concentrated in Newcastle, Sydney and Wollongong areas. Whilst 1,046 schools, or 47% of the total number of schools, are spread out in regional, remote and very remote areas of the state. If you are located in a major city in New South Wales, you have choice. Choice over health services, choice over counselling, choice in accessing casual staff, choice in schools, choice in shopping centres to visit, choice in internet providers and access to high-speed internet, and choice in a range of public transport options. From regional to remote and very remote areas, choice degrades to limited options as geographic isolation amplifies the issues of access to services and choice of services. This quick comparison demonstrates quite clearly how geographic isolation amplifies the issue of access to and choice of services. It's also important to recognise that geographic isolation amplifies the cost of accessing those goods and services. Furthermore, whilst technology can be part of the solution, it's not the solution, as reliable and cost-effective access to the internet varies, as can be seen in this Telstra mobile coverage map. Research has demonstrated that educational outcomes for students in rural and remote areas are lower than their major city counterparts. But what are the factors that have led to this situation? Therapy services are scarce and sparse, and as such, it becomes more difficult to provide the best start to schooling for students in need of those services. Small cohorts provide less chance for peer-to-peer -peer interaction as well as friendly competition to encourage greater success. Minorities are marginalised even further by geographic isolation. As the old song goes, one is the loneliest number. Access to confidential health services becomes complicated, resulting in discretion being some distance away. The concept of local work placements for vocational education in many cases disappears into the distance as small communities do not have the capacity to provide the options for vocational education. Furthermore, more positive vocational role models are fewer, which dampens aspirations. Geographic isolation also ensures that in many cases there is no such thing as a day excursion. This is particularly so for major state events where participation takes longer 
and costs more. Geographic isolation also impacts upon how and what extracurricular activities rural and remote students can participate in. So what are some of the sustainable strategies to improve educational outcomes? To better respond to the needs of local schools in rural and remote New South Wales, state support needs to be contextualised based upon the complexity of the school and its geographic location. It involves ensuring that learning opportunities for all students can be properly contextualised and supported in their local school. Most importantly, it is about ensuring local schools and local communities have the capacity and the flexibility to work in partnership for the benefit of all students and for our future.